Welcome to this episode of TNTech, uh, TNTech series on going serverless with Azure Functions. So uh, in, in the last episode of the series, uh, we talked about creating a function pipeline using the Azure, po Azure portal. And uh, there we looked entire, uh, the, we worked entirely on uh, the Azure portal to develop the applications. But uh, most of the time developers prefer working on their local development environments. So uh, even if uh, the Azure portal provides a great uh, development experience for Azure functions, uh, we basically prefer developing and testing the applications locally. So uh, in this episode, we'll be looking uh, into the ways that uh, we can do uh, lo local development uh, with Azure functions and how to uh, get up and running with local development. And uh, to start off, there are two ways of developing Azure functions locally. Uh, one way is uh, is the use of Azure functions core tools and the function CLI provided by it uh, to create the functions and use the use an editor like Visual Studio Code for uh, coding the Azure functions. And uh, this is a better option for functions created using JavaScript. So you can uh, use the function CLI to create uh, to run debug and the test the uh, function application locally and the next option we have uh, is to use the visual studio 2017 with the azure function tools for visual studio 2017 inst extension installed so this provides uh, azure functions project templates uh, into visual studio and the tooling necessary to create the azure functions uh, this is a better option for c -sharp functions and uh, both these options uh, are at the moment only supported uh, on Windows platform. This is mainly because the function host uh, where the functions are actually running is not yet cross-platform so we are limited to developing on uh, Windows uh, platforms at the moment. And uh, to use uh, uh, Azure functions core tools you need to have uh, Node.js uh, installed and uh, the Azure function core uh, tools npm package uh, needs to be installed globally so installing this package will provide the Azure functions uh, CLI and you can use this CLI to uh, create debug uh, and test uh, Azure functions locally and finally you can interact with the Azure portal and publish the functions directly from your local development environment as well and uh, this CLI provides uh, three aliases uh, so we can access the CLI and uh, using the CLI you can interact with uh, the Azure function apps that you create uh, on the Azure portal as well. So you can do things like uh, pulling down uh, app configuration settings and uh, uh, interacting with storage accounts and also uh, at the end publish the application to Azure uh, portal as well. So uh, the next option we have is the Azure Function Tools for Visual Studio 2017 extension. So this extension is installed uh, into Visual Studio 2017 and uh, at the moment this uh, extension only works with Visual Studio 2017 update 3 which is in preview at the moment. So uh, you need to have uh, the Azure Functions core tools, the NPM package we talked about installed on the system which actually installs the uh, function host on your development machine. And uh, Visual Studio uses this function host to run and debug the uh, functions that you create. So after installing the extension, uh, a new project template will be added to Visual Studio. And uh, this is a preferred way of developing c -sharp functions. And with this new tooling support, uh, it use, uses uh, c -sharp files instead of c -sharp script that uh, we were using to develop uh, uh, Azure functions locally, especially in uh, the earlier versions of this tooling support. And uh, But we don't need to worry, these c -sharp script files are still supported uh, on the Azure portal. Uh, just that the development experience now is using C sharp files instead of that. So uh, this uh, provides better uh, debugging experience with IntelSense uh, during the de uh, development which is not uh, yet there. Uh, not yet there uh, in the C sharp script files. So the other features that is available is basically now it is using uh, webjob attributes uh, to declare the function bindings. This 
basically means that we are no longer using the functions uh, function dot json file to declare our input and output bindings so uh, we don't need to maintain that function but uh, it is not entirely uh, taken out of uh, Azure function it's basically generated at the end when we build the build the function so it is not we we know we, know, we do we do not uh, interact interact it with uh, that uh, directly and uh, this uh, using this c sharp files allows us to pre-compile the c sharp functions uh, that we create and uh, this provides better cold start performance basically because we are compiling the c sharp uh, files and uh, uploading that to the functions so this is a better way of doing it So you guys, uh, we are having a small technical difficulty. Uh, yeah, okay, we're back. Yes, so uh, now uh, we have a like, basic understanding of what options are available for a function development uh, locally. And uh, we will now get into a quick demo using both of these approaches to develop functions. So uh, we'll uh, look we'll look uh, at both of these options now. So I'll start with uh, the uh, CLI. So at the moment, I have the Azure Function Core Tools uh, and you get uh, npm package installed globally. So I can use that to access the uh, CLI and create the function. So now I am in a folder uh, in my local partition. So I'm going to uh, just create the function application now. So I'm starting with uh, issuing this command. Uh, I'm going to create the function called tntech. This will basically create uh, the function uh, host.json file and a local settings uh, file, uh, another JSON file, which uh, how, which has, has the uh, application settings uh, and the connection strings that is available for the function application. And this will automatically generate uh, or initialize a Git repository as well. And this also had, adds a launch.json file, which actually supports uh, Visual Studio Code uh, debugging experience. So uh, we look at that. Uh, as well so now it's time to create the new function so i'm going to execute uh, func new this will actually start the function creation process so we will be presented with uh, selecting the language for the function so this time i'm going to start with uh, creating javascript function so i'm going to select javascript from here and uh, for simplicity uh, we'll be creating an http trigger so i'm going to select the template uh, here and I'm finally I'm going to add the name. So I'm going to add HTTP trigger demo. So now this will create a folder inside uh, the current folder that I'm in, uh, and it will uh, create three files for us: the index.json file where we have the logic for the function, and the sample.dat file where we have the test data, and the functions.json uh, file. So we'll navigate into this folder and see okay so we have the function uh, function dot json file here we have defined uh, we have we have the bindings defined so at the moment it's just uh, trigger uh, http trigger and we have the code for the uh, HTTP trigger function. So next up, what we can do is we can uh, uh, start the functions. To, to do that, uh, we'll just uh, execute this command function host start. This will actually start the function. Right, so we need to go back into the project root. Give me 
a second just to figure this out. Okay, great. I made a mistake. I need to go into T and Tech. And then I'm going to issue the command again to function, uh, create the function. So I was not in the uh, root folder uh, which the function I was created on. So I'm going to do func new and start over again select javascript and again select http trigger right right okay now we are good so again we have the hosted json file which is not uh, which is empty at the moment and we have the local settings file this is only available uh, locally uh, for your development work. This will not be uploaded to the function application when you're publishing it. But you can, if you want, you can actually do that as well through the command line. So, uh, so we need to actually populate this uh, Asia Web Job Storage uh, connection string. This is actually not required unless you are using HTTP trigger. But for uh, other uh, trigger types, this. Uh, value needs to be there that means the connect valid connection string to a storage account should be there and uh, you cannot use the uh, storage emulator which uh, is installed with the hsdk so it's not supported at the moment so you have to have a, a real uh, storage account so to start uh, we'll run this application and see what happens and now the function host is starting and we can uh, see that uh, this is using the default port uh, which is this uh, localhost uh, 7071 and I'm going to copy this and open Postman and let's see ex uh, executing a request to this uh, URL so at the moment this is uh, expecting a, a, a query string parameter or, uh, with, a with, with a name so I'm going to send that and uh, yeah we already have this so i am um, sending this soon as the query string parameter and i'm going to send this here so now you can see uh, it's pinging me back with hello kasun so now the function is executed and uh, let's see how the debugging experience is happening so i'm going to uh, close the running of the function yes and to start uh, debugging this uh, i'm going to pass in a uh, command line argument uh, which actually connects this to the uh, environment which is in this case which is to code so i'm going to run uh, host start passing which is to code so this will actually uh, use that launch.json file and uh, it will configure the application for debugging so if we uh, go into the application let's set a debug point here and uh, you can see uh, this launch station file uh, it has the debugging port uh, mentioned here and we can go into debugging section and just uh, since this is selected uh, by default we'll just start debugging and now the debug is connected so if i go ahead and execute this uh, uh, this uh, this call again it will actually hit that debug point so i'm going to hit it again so now you can see the debug point is hit and you can inspect the values and do the normal debugging activities that you do so uh, that is how you can uh, actually debug an application and develop application locally especially javascript uh, functions uh, with visual studio code and uh, using the cli itself so next we'll look at uh, how we can do the same thing using uh, C sharp with Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio 2017. So I have Visual Studio 2017 uh, update three preview uh, installed. So I have already uh, installed the extension. So if you go into extensions and updates, you can see this function uh, Asia Visual Studio 2017 tools so for Asia function is installed. So this will actually provide you with some templates, uh, a template for Azure Functions. So we go into new project and you can see in the cloud section, uh, this Azure function is created, function template is available. So I'm going to go back uh, and select a location for my uh, 
application I'm going to go in here here and select this so this will be yes so I'm going to create this now using this uh, template uh, Visual Studio will actually create the uh, initial setup for this is includes the host JSON and the local settings of JSON file. So it is basically similar to uh, what we had uh, in JavaScript development experience. So next what we need to do is go ahead and add the uh, function uh, a function to this function application. So we can right click on solution and go into add and a new item. And this will uh, provide you uh, a function application so we will select h functions and you name this trigger vs and i'm going to click add and uh, this will actually show you a new dialog box where you need to select the trigger for this and for simplicity i'm going to again select http uh, trigger and change the access rights to anonymous and uh, change the function name to http trigger demo and I'm going to create this. So this will basically create a C sharp file. And if you open this up, now you can see, even though we created the C sharp file and we basically eventually created a function, there is no uh, function dot JSON file. So we don't work with it directly. So what we have at the moment is this uh, attributes provided by the uh, Azure Web Job SDK. So this is how we use uh, these attributes to bind uh, uh, basically do the bindings so now we have this uh, trigger configured here this using this HTTP trigger attribute and it is using this uh, authentic authorization level anonymous we can we have the other options as well and uh, you can use the other bindings available in the Azure web job SDK to bind to any different types of triggers and input and output bindings so basically what we have at the moment is the same thing uh, uh, like we did in JavaScript. So to run this, uh, I'm going to again put a debug point here. And this is uh, underneath, uh, this is actually using the uh, Azure function score tools and the function host that is uh, installed with it. So we don't have to use this CLI to run this, we'll just uh, click uh, this debug button and we'll start debugging. And it's actually uh, combining the uh, function and now it's running. So again, uh, I think we can go ahead and execute a, a call to this and see. So I'm, I'm having this call, uh, this uh, Postman window, uh, which is the same one we have. It's basically running in the same port. Uh, this is using the default port. So you can see it's running here and the debug is sitting on the port 5858. So I'm going to execute this uh, again and we'll see now uh, the debug point is hit uh, in Visual Studio. So now we can actually go through the code and see what happens. The normal debug experience, uh, the normal intelligence experience that we have in Visual Studio, it is basically provided to us uh, using this uh, Azure function tools with this C sharp file support. So uh, now we, are, we, we saw how we can uh, develop uh, functions locally. But before we wind up, uh, I'm going to just open up this uh, uh, solution uh, in the Explorer and we'll go into this bin folder and see what's in there. So here you can see the function uh, uh, JSON file is now available. But if we open this up and see, So you can see here, uh, the normal bindings that uh, we uh, declare in the function JSON is there. So this, uh, this is actually created uh, during the build step. And uh, you can see this script file is actually referencing this DL that was created. So that DL is here. So this is the DL, this is referencing that. And the entry point is also defined in uh, this uh, function JSON. So this is actually getting generated, but we don't work with it directly so uh, that is it for the demo guys uh, we'll start off with the presentation again yeah so right so i think uh, 
you now have an idea about how we can develop uh, functions locally and what are the available options for that and uh, this basically takes us to the end of this episode so in the coming episodes uh, in this uh, function series we'll talk more about uh, developing each functions and what are the features available with that and uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me at any time. And also visit my blog. Basically, uh, I write frequently about Azure functions, and uh, each of these episodes usually is followed up by a blog article, so you can use that to learn more or refresh your memory. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, episode of TN Tech. So I'll see you in the next one. Uh, thank you guys.